Giuseppe Tartini was a legendary violinist and teacher in his day, and one of the most influential figures in his time. His views on violin playing and music were adopted by a legion of musicians all over Europe, including, for instance, Mozart, who learned to play the violin from his father Leopold, a great admirer of the Italian master. Nowadays, every violinist knows a great deal about Tartini and his music, but not many are prepared to record or perform this music. Tartini was unusually interested in folk music, which he referred to as natural music. He admired the simplicity and the eloquence of this natural musical expression and tried to incorporate some of its uh, elements into his works. He did that especially in the sonate piccole, small sonatas, um, six of which I have recorded for the label Challenge Classics. These sonatas he preferred to perform unaccompanied, possibly because he wanted to have greater freedom and certainly because they contain uh, uh, gestures and sonorities typical of folk music. This is a short example of uh, Tartini's borrowing from the Venetian tradition. That was the Aria del Tasso. It was based on Torquato Tasso's Jerusalem Delivered, and in the 18th century it was a famous performance of the Venetian gondoliers. Also Goethe talks about it in his Italian journey. It was a collective singing given at night, um, with one gondolier starting to sing a stanza from his gondola, and another one continuing the singing from a nearby canal. Clearly, they all knew Tasso's masterpiece by heart, and it is interesting to note that although Venetians uh, were and still are inclined to speak their beautiful dialect rather than Italian, uh, this singing was kept in pure Italian. Tartini was born in the region of Istria, in his day part of the Republic of Venice and uh, now part of Slovenia. Uh, apparently, despite his interest in uh, folk music, he uh, wasn't very keen on the music of his native land, which he found utterly unpleasant. As a young man, he was uh, a rather restless character, trying to find his way in life. Uh, he was initially sent to Padua to study law by his parents, but he soon realized that he was a very good violinist and an excellent swordsman. And, uh, a rather impulsive and quick-tempered young person. One possible reason why many violinists shy away from Tartini is that his music is pretty hard to perform. But there is something else. Really, some of this music is not fit for a normal performance. Some of these sonatas are uh, better suited for the tavern than for the concert platform or indeed the church. This is a rustic furlana composed by Tartini following the principles, or the lack of principles, if you like, uh, of uh, traditional dances. It is a succession of uh, uh, melodic fragments uh, following one another without ever returning to the main tune. Thank you. 
Tartini settled in Padua in 1721, where he founded an important violin school and where he belonged to a circle of bright minds with whom he exchanged ideas, uh, discoveries, uh, information. He was thrilled by his own discovery of the so-called terzo suono, that is a third sound originating from two notes being played simultaneously with perfect intonation. As a scientist, he acted in the wake of great figures of the past, like Galileo Galilei, who, on top of being a scientist, was a keen poet. In passing, I'd like to mention that at the same time as Galileo's discoveries, the great Mattia Preti painted this marvel we have here. In his maturity, Tartini was a much respected figure. By then, his playing had become legendary, and he was also well known for his theoretical works. But there is a portion of his repertoire that bears the mark of some inner struggle. Um, some of his musical statements become more private, more perturbed, as if the master felt some pre-romantic echoes in the air. This extraordinary man, with his manifold interests, capable of being a scientist with the soul of an artist, given to scientific discoveries, and yet with a taste for the poems of Petrarca and Metastasio, whose inspiration he sought before composing. This somehow elusive character, who lived a long and full life, died in 1770 when Mozart had already composed some of his early masterpieces. Beethoven was to be born in December, and just a handful of years before Goethe took Europe by storm with his sorrows of young Werther. Definitely, Giuseppe Tartini is a man who doesn't belong to any predetermined category. Anyway, whatever category we may have in mind for him, he remains a surprising genius. <laughs>